So in the previous module, we asked a pretty bad question. Is friction good or friction evil? But you know a much better question to ask is, when can I increase friction when I want to and when can I reduce friction when I don't want to? So as you think about that, you might wonder where would you want more friction? We'll first talk about that. So where do you want more friction? In say a shoe, when you want to climb a mountain or something, you want shoes that won't slip, you want grip, right? And what about tire? You want a, more, you want a tire which has more grip. Now if you notice, one of the ways of achieving this is by putting one of these. It's called treading. Yeah, you put those lines and give those grooves, then it gets you more grip. How exactly? Isn't that a question you have? How exactly does do those help in getting you more grip? Now, if you're going on a surface that is soft, as we call it, then these treads tend to give you a lot more grip because they sink into that surface. What effect is this? Of our first three causes we read, adhesion, flowing effect, and roughness, right? This is flowing effect because the surface is very soft when you push into it you're getting a lot more friction okay now the really if you're really really keen right you will have a question which is have you watched f1 if you watched f1 you definitely have this question the tires in an f1 race car don't have these threads at all but they're going so fast they cannot afford to skid so how can they afford to not have these threads if the threads help in friction then how do f1 cars not have them that's the question i'm challenging you with Think about that for a minute, after which we can discuss this together. So now that you've thought about it, how can an F1 car which goes so fast not skid even though it does not have treads on it? Well, the surprise answer is those treads don't help much when you're on solid road, right? Because look at it, on something like clay, those treads are going to sink into the clay. But if you take something like a road, nothing, right? It only in fact reduces the surface area, right? If you look at it, there will be parts of the tire which are touching the road, but parts which are in the air because they are in those gaps. Now, later on you will learn that friction does not depend on surface area in principle. Like as an idea it does not, but in most practical situation it does depend upon surface area. So if you've reduced the surface area, the threads are reducing the surface area, then what do you know? You know that the friction also should have reduced. So the truth is, in most of these bikes or cars that you see, mostly in the bikes that you see out here, you will see those threads, they actually reduce the friction then why are they there? What's the point of those threads if they reduce friction? Especially on these hard roads. The point is that they help remove water in case there is a wet road. So because on a normal road, you cannot predict whether it's, there's, it's going to be wet one day or dry. You cannot afford to change your tires every day looking at the weather. You know, you look at the weather and go, ah, I'll put these tires today. You can't, you don't really do that. So you have to make sure you have a trade-off between a wet day and a dry day. So if you have a wet day, then those threads really come in handy because the water gets trapped between them and they get thrown out much better than slipping on the surface of water. Now, which is why, typically, on, on if, if there's an F1 car, and if it's raining, they won't use that. Because when it's raining, those tires are going to start slipping. But if it's a dry road, then getting more area is better. And the interesting thing here is that F1 cars use a very different rubber. They use a rubber that's soft rubber, whereas ours uses a hard rubber. This, the normal, any bike that you would see on the road uses hard rubber, and it has those grooves so that water gets thrown out. Because they can't, you know, they can't know when it's going to rain, right? So F1 tires use what's called a soft rubber, which kind of, once you get hot, which is why they do a trial run, or it's called the burnout run. So you, they do a burnout so the tire gets pretty hot, or they even start meandering on the road so they get their tires hot, and then the rubber becomes sticky. If you were to ever have an opportunity to go and touch one of these F1 tires after a race, you'd notice they actually are extremely sticky. Yeah, the rubber is very soft, it begins to start getting very, very sticky with the road, so they get a huge amount of friction, very, very good friction, even without any treading.